Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. A warm welcome to the new subscribers. I thank you for taking the time to watch my videos and to share and comment. Just a reminder to hit the like button. It helps me out uh, tremendously. It helps to get these videos out and uh, amongst the, um, the eyes of new, new watches. So today we're focusing on those that seek to own everything, to control everything. Call them what you will. We're not to fear them, nor concern ourselves with their progress. For the battle is already won. Yet it is important to tread carefully while we live where we live. I started thinking about their end game plan. It is not that I fear, for God is my strong tower, my rock, my fortress. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Psalms 61, 3. But I want to try and understand what the rulers of this world plan to achieve, what their utopia looks like, what truly is their end game plan. We all know it leads to death and destruction and God will use them when he unleashes the sword upon the land. This is a big question. It would take many videos to answer such a question for there are many moving parts like a system or a machine that has been in operation for a very long time. Unbeknownst to many hiding in plain sight, but obvious to those with a nose for evil and a hunger for truth. Once you see, you cannot unsee, nor can you be the same, live the same, feel the same. God does not want, God does not want us to waste our energy on these things, but I pray this video reaches someone who may be led here by their interest in the truth and during their search. They realize that God is truth. And when I wrote this, I meant to say it was God does not want us to waste our energy in fear over these things or worrying about these things. The only source of truth that there is, is his holy word, his holy Bible. It is there to guide us to that narrow path, to set us straight and lead us back to him. Once you read the book with understanding, even a little, it leads to more and more truth, eventually a great revealing. So may this video reach someone new today, or at least, the very least, help inform others of how they hide their system and their plans within the very media in which the average person consumes. Today we'll focus on artificial intelligence, virtual reality and robots. In the movie Ready Player One, society is forced to live atop of each other. In small one bedroom domiciles known as the stacks, everyone is basically living inside virtual reality because they're constantly playing it. Um, as people use social media now in place of the real world, for the world outside has become an utter mess. Not shown here, but in the movie we see drones delivering food. We see tech addiction, misery and people idolizing a world known as the Oasis. There's nowhere left to go. Nowhere. Except the Oasis. A whole virtual universe. People come to the Oasis for all the things they can do. But they stay because of all the things they can be. Can you feel this? Um, yeah. It's the only place that feels like I mean anything. We see the reoccurring theme of be whatever you want, do whatever you want, do it without repercussion, a common theme. Do what thou will. This is literally what Satan teaches and what he wants for his world. Is this a coincidence? Think not. We see enslavement where people are forced to play VR for a long, peri long periods of time and perform tasks within the metaverse itself. This indicates to me that someone has considered this deeply and is convinced it makes logical sense to put it in a movie. A scary notion, as you can imagine this type of slavery taking place in the future. We see that the Oasis has become, the Oasis becomes a new economy of the world. Everyone spends their money in a repeated cycle of leveling up and accumulating virtual meaningless wealth for their player avatar in order to further their progress and social standing in the world, a form of social credit system. More so than the book, 
The movie focuses more on exciting the user and appealing to gamers through 80s nostalgia. Help us save the Oasis. And through appealing to the younger gaming generation, making it look cool. This is how the devil works. That red Lambo, that big house, those diamonds in your teeth. It is all just prideful vainglory and lies. None of this will make you happy or leave you fulfilled. It will only give you emptiness and wanting more and more. King Solomon had it all. He was the richest man that ever lived. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. God gave him wealth beyond his wildest dreams, everything he could imagine, yet nothing ever fulfilled him. We see in 1 Kings 11 that in his old age, Solomon followed after the desires of strange women. He turned the wrong way and started worshipping other gods, including Molech and Moab, and he did these things to please his strange wives. Thus began his downfall. When we worship or idolize things that we know are inherently not from God, then we can be assured that it will only lead to our destruction, to our downfall. Satan will entice us to behave in this manner through his shiny things and by appealing to our lusts. Therefore, you can see why this movie is focused on enticement for this technology and aimed at the younger generation, the target market. You know, and just to add to that, you know, we look at the youth of today and they're just inseparable from their phones, okay? And where um, the generation above that, so anyone who's sort of like 30s to 40s and up, we're no different, okay? We've, we've become addic tech addicted as well. We use our phones for everything. We always have them. Um, there's no difference that will eventuate here between AR glasses, okay, really, you know, really well presented AR glasses and VR and headsets and things. They'll just be used in different contexts. So they'll, you know, they'll, they'll essentially become one in the same. It'll just be a different format. We see Solomon reflecting on life in Ecclesiastes 1, 14 to 18. You can see in how he writes that he's disheartened with life in spite of all the riches and things he's been given. The only true riches are in the life to come, the life with God. Nothing in this world matters, nor that in a virtual world. Ecclesiastes 1 to 14 says, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. I communed with my own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that are before me in Jer Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. So he's saying here, like, if we see straight away, you know, he's, um, everything leads back to vanity and the vexation of the spirit, all possessions. Um, things that are crooked can't be made straight. Things that are inherently um, evil or broken cannot be made straight. They are what they are. This is what his words. And they, they are wanting and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. People always want more. You know, and he's saying, hey, I came into a greater state. I've been given all this. Look at everything I've been given, okay? And I've been given so much wisdom and knowledge. Um, and, and he says here, and I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this is also the vexation of spirit. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increaseth in knowledge increaseth in sorrow. And this is the walk of a Christian, okay? So is that the more you learn and the more you uncover of this world that we live in, the deeper your sorrow because you see the truth, you see it for what it is, okay? It's the red pill, it's the blue pill, it's, you know, it's you once you're awake to what's going on and you understand the truth and you see all these people around you that are unaware of those things, your sorrow just gets deeper and deeper, okay? You hurt more and more. That's what he's saying. Like all this wealth, all these idols, all these objects, every, I could have the biggest house, the biggest McMansion in the world. But the more I know of the, of the truth of around me, the, the more sorrowful I become. It all becomes vanity and vainglory. Like it just doesn't mean anything. Okay, it means nothing. Now, look at what we spend our lives doing. We spend our lives 
in this world, you know, what to buy a house so that we, you know, we can die and give it to somebody else. Um, we put all our time into, you know, building these treasures and, and having these treasures and owning them. But do, what do we leave the world with? We leave the world with nothing. You know, what's it all for? And that's what he's saying is that as he became wise, he's, it opened his eyes. That's what I, I, you know, that's what I pray. This reaches somebody and you open your eyes and just go have a reality check and go, what's it all for, you know? And it always comes back to the truth, which is God. It's all about our journey, okay? You're, you're like a detective and you don't start out as a detective. Um, and you basically, you're given a narrative and you've got to try and look at the clues and and all those little bits and pieces, right? And then eventually you find the book and you look in the book and there's all the knowledge in the book. And they say, oh, there was no instruction manual. And you're like, well, all the knowledge is in the book and the book leads to truth. Then the truth leads, uh, truth leads to understanding and then you start building a relationship with God. And then all of a sudden you're on that path. You're on that trajectory to go home. Okay? You're on that trajectory to go home when the time comes. Okay, and you can, you can be comforted in knowing that you're going home, that, you know, that's, you're going to where you're supposed to be, okay? You're starting, to, you're starting to understand that this whole thing was all for that, so you could find your way home, okay? This whole thing, this whole exercise, the whole point of this, okay, was to see your, where your faith lies, okay, and see what you were going to do, and see who you truly are at the depth of you. And who you truly are takes time to manifest because you have to destroy all the things you are not, okay? It's been my experience. Okay, so if you think about it, this generation will be young adults in the coming seven to 10 years, those targeted who grow up on this technology. We also see the original creator in this video of Oculus um, the original creator of Oculus, Palmalaki, having designed a headset that if you lose the game will physically kill you <laughs> with some charges that go straight to your brain and explode. He also mentions a tamper-proof device that would stop the player from removing the headset. For me, this goes beyond a joke and novelty. This is deep-seated evil and wickedness. Anyone who spends their time plotting destruction is inherently evil. For their heart studieth destruction and their lips talk of mischief. Proverbs 24.2 Can you imagine this is a form of torture? Having to win constantly in the game to remain alive. If you lose, it is game over. They make out like this is all for a bit of fun. But truly, these are the sort of evil things they think up. And love to brag about. A sister in Christ led me to a word from God that said the Pinocchio project has begun. This led to finding a documentary called Stanley and Us. The Pinocchio project, it's also called. As the title states, the Pinocchio project is a story of an unrealized project, a dream that Stanley Kubrick worked on for more than 20 years. The story of a robot child who wants to become human and be loved. After watching this, I then realized that Steven Spielberg had taken over this story that Stanley Kubrick never finished. Stanley originally took the idea from another writer in a collaborative effort, but then Steven Spielberg made, ended up making the actual movie, which was Artificial Intelligence, in 2001. The story is about an AI boy that becomes part of a family that has a child who is in a cryosleep. He is never expected to wake up until a way to heal him has been found. The AI child, David, was created to love. After some things go pear-shaped in his adopting family and David is abandoned by his human mother, he then goes on a quest to become human like Pinocchio, to become a human like Pinocchio figure, searching for the blue fairy. This blue fairy becomes somewhat of an idol and there are many jabs at God throughout the movie. The writer even sort of challenged Kubrick about why he wanted to keep the blue fairy part in the whole story, but I think that's a deeper, there was a deeper reason behind it. The movie is set in a future where the ice caps have melted and America and much of the world is underwater. Sentient robots are everywhere and humans are dependent upon them for many jobs and roles. 
Let's be honest, this movie seeks to have the viewer empathize with the AI, and I admit by the end of the movie you'll find it hard not to. They've done this by having a real human actor though. If this were a real AI or robot, it would be a lifeless movie. This deception is clever by design. There is so much programming in this movie that gives hints, which we see repeated in other movies of the future. Yeah, so they basically, they used a, you know, a child actor um, because it has real emotion and allowed us to empathize, you know, we would naturally empathize with a human. We can detect if someone's a robot or not, okay? So that's, that's how clever they are. And so they've got the point across now that, that programming of when these AI robots and other things come in, it's easier for people to start to go, oh, you know, they have rights too, poor robots. Um, and, and try and take the empathetic side, you know, and, and they'll remember that movie. They'll remember, hey, I watched that movie. You know, I better be careful with how I think. Um, whereas the truth is that it's inherently evil. <laughs> okay, it's inher inherently evil. Absolutely. Um, all right, so uh, where, where am I up to? Yeah, there's a character we see called Joe Gigolo, a love bot, and even a carnival called Flesh Fair where humans destroy robots for fun. This group is how they want to portray the Christian element, like a bunch of rebellious rioters and unsophisticated rednecks. There are many, many key moments in this movie that supplant the notion that AI and its emergence with robotics is the true end game here. To have AI across everything 2D, 3D and physical. Just for reference, but if the, world, if the Lord's word was that the Pinocchio project has begun, then we should not only focus on um, focus on looking at how they're building robots that are sentient and human-like, but it stands to reason to look at how they might be also turning us as real-life humans into robots as well. He chose two elements, samarium and cobalt. Combined, they form a material highly sensitive to magnetic fields, which means that Brad can direct the movement of the robot without touching it. Once again, a material replaces a machine, and the device gets smaller. So then, besides just the robot, what we also have is this system here of electromagnets. And so what each of these copper coils do is they generate magnetic fields. Oh, man. Yeah, I got a bunch of them every, every direction. And so we have eight of these here. That's why we, we call this the Octomag. Octomag? That's right. <laughs> the Octomag. By adjusting the strength of these eight electromagnets, the surgeon can move the micro-robot any direction along the X, Y, or Z axis, pushing or pulling it through the eye. But landing it on the tiny section of retina that's used for seeing in sharp detail takes lots of practice. And you've been practicing with dummy eyeballs so far? We use that, but we also use uh, animal eyes as well. Okay, so you think about it, the, the boy in the movie wanted to be human, okay? And, um, and so imagine that if something changed us from being human and we want to be human again, but we're classified as something else, we kind of like the boy in the movie, aren't we? The Matrix, the movie, truly demonstrates this and mimics many hidden truths that people are now so programmed to, that if anyone brings up these topics, they will say that you've literally watched The Matrix too much. This type of exposure-based programming closes off the hearts and minds of people because their favorite movies always seem so detached from reality, so far-fetched that nothing in the movie will be seen as the truth or potential to be the truth. Because at Eastern Airlines, world conquest is part of our master plan. Now enjoy the soothing music of the turtles. Don't you think? Welcome to the electric car of the future, sponsored by the gasoline producers of America. Hello, I'm an electric car. Yet the truth is always hiding in plain sight. Those that look with dif a different lens, not those that know their Bibles, have sought out God and have received the Holy Spirit, will look at everything with a discerning lens. In the Matrix, they're telling us that the human body can serve as the energy requirement for the robots. What they weren't telling you, however, is that these robots will be inside of you, 
and will be powered by you. Nanotechnology and the metaverse are both combined here to show the synthesis of the two. The metaverse is glorified heavily in this movie. You know, you could argue there are many parallels from the Bible here too. Look at it how you will. Um, agents are like demonic spirits. They can jump in and out of other bodies. You know, Neo, the main character, has abilities inside the Matrix much like the 144,000. We see that the system gets reset and Neo is also the, the program designed to perform the reset. The architect is a reference to a creator of the Matrix who is likened to Satan. The, he's the creator of this world, his world. The ship Nebuchadnezzar, for example, is from the Bible itself, likened to the king who sought prophecy to interpret his dreams. Okay, they try and bring the prophetic in the movie as well with the, um, the oracle and other things. Okay, um, In the movie Blade Runner, the original, we see the seeking out of robots or replicants who have gone rogue. You could easily interpret this to mean that anyone who is outside of the system will be sought and terminated. Um, it encourages empathy with robots yet again in many ways. More programming. In the movie The Lawnmower Man, we're introduced to an ape that is trained for war wearing a headset. After the ape escapes and is killed and covered up, there is a need, there is a desperate need to continue this work on a human subject. The scientist sees his lawnmower man possess a very low IQ and level of intelligence. He convinces him to be injected with something that allows him to increase his intelligence rapidly and play, then he plays games in VR. We see this theme used in the Matrix as well. What they don't tell you is that these virtual spaces can also be used for the reverse, to essentially dumb you down and focus primarily on process-based tasks. The virtual world stimulate, stimulates us in ways that we're not designed to be stimulated. Things are not presented how God intended. And man eventually, uh, therefore, sorry, therefore it can be like a drug, like LSD, addictive suggest, and suggestive allowing us to become pliable to whatever we experience. Plot spoiler, but the lawnmower man eventually becomes addicted to his newfound intelligence and starts to manifest supernatural powers in the real world. He eventually finds his entire consciousness uploaded into the mainframe, known as the Light Institute. Spoiler, but Lucifer or Satan can present himself as an angel of light. He is called the Lightbringer in Latin after all. The movie also features a priest that whips the lawnmower man whenever he does something wrong due to his low IQ, which makes a total mockery of the Christian faith and focuses on showing the Gnostic pagan rituals found in Catholicism, which are rituals and beliefs of man. You see this a lot in movies, people confessing to a priest and not God, fundamental religious types of whips and lynching people, basically any moment given to mock God and they will take it. This is not true Christianity, to be clear. True Christians follow God's commandments, love their neighbours, not lynch, lynch or persecute them. There are several scenes where the lawnmower man seems, seems to be able to manipulate the very fabric of a man and destroy him from the inside out. For me, it was a standout and appeared as electromagnetic radiation, such as microwaves, and the manipulation of water molecules in the human body. Those big towers that supposedly provide internet, well, the microwave radiation emitted when they are turned up can essentially turn you into popcorn. Why do you think you cannot buy EMF testing devices that can actually see those frequencies that they emit? You have to be a contractor, uh, an actual service representative to get one. I looked into it, they're about $35,000 Australian. If you watch the behavior of birds around these things, sometimes you'll catch some really odd behavior. Um, there is a scene where Job, the lawnmower man, controls his wife as well, and she ends up killing some police and then being killed 
herself. So he controls her using his brain, all right? You can see the programming that this metaverse really is just a new network, a new playground when it is connected and fully operational. So everything's interconnected and Satan plans to govern it. Job doesn't quite make it, the main character, to, the, to world domination in the first movie. But by the second movie, things get more interesting. One more thing worth mentioning. Look at the resemblance to the VR oscillating device that Job uses throughout the movie. It's Leon, Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. It certainly is an accident. I noticed that straight away. In the second movie, Job finds his real-life body being brought back to life by scientists and he's wearing what appears to be likened to a Neuralink device to rehabilitate him. A BCI interface, a brain-computer interface. His first words are Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater. And did you notice that PPP is 666? Upside down in reverse, hidden in plain sight. All right, so just um, think about that. He is admitting he is the devil, Satan, and this is the giveaway in who his character is supposed to be. He spawns into the virtual world and starts to regain his powers again and build a chip known as the Kion chip, which he is building for the patent donor. So he's building a chip inside something for the network. <laughs> okay, what chip is he building? Um... He's, the components of the chip are being built. He's building them inside. He's like a little nano thing. Yeah, I'm not going to say any more of that. Um, who basically, so the, the patent, patent owner of the chip tells Joe, basically, I own you. Does it sound familiar? Like a patent in a certain something the world took. The movie brazenly shows off a ton of symbology in plain sight. It is truly hard to miss. We see more reference to the teenagers addicted to VR like a drug and wanting to play and visit their virtual worlds. And I just want to add too that I'm not trying to mock or make fun of anyone who's taken the thing. I took the thing, okay? I've repented for it, um, but it doesn't make me any better or um, any different than anyone else. Um, I just find it so inherently evil that I, I try not to laugh because it is just, it is just so evil, um, this whole thing, right? And the fact they've been telling us about it for so long. Um, you know, I've got loved ones that have had it too and I, I really, I'm deeply concerned about them. So don't think that I'm, you know, making fun of anyone who's taken it because it's the last thing I would do. Um, if anything, I know what it is to suffer and I know what it is to be sick and I know how sick I felt. And, you know, I, I was just an absolute mess and you see that in my testimony. Um, you know, it's a time I don't think of fondly either. Like I, I remember everything about those days and it just, it's really disturbing. It's disturbing to me now and what I know now when I look back that I was, I was so, you know, like I was, I, I, and at the end of the day, right, like I didn't know God, but I still made a conscious decision. Okay, I still decided I still made a decision. So I made a, it was a weakness, you know. It doesn't mean that, you know, you have to sort of jump in the air and go, ha, you idiot, da, da, da. You know, I was strong. I stayed at home. Well, perhaps you knew, you know, perhaps you knew God. And um, that's good. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you didn't take it. But don't brag that you didn't take it and that everyone else is a complete and utter washout idiot, okay? Because, you know, at the end of the day, we make mistakes. Everybody does. Okay. You know, you just need to be really careful with how you treat people. I see this in forums. I see people getting torn to shreds that took this thing. And hey, like the persecution you went through from not taking it, you're dishing that out to people that did. All right. So you're actually just as bad as they are. So I'd just be really careful. And I feel the need to say that um, because it's just, you know, it's, it's a common thing. So don't be self-righteous, you know, look, you know, just repent if you've taken it and he'll, he'll make you well again. And if you don't believe in God, I really urge you to, to repent to God and, and understand that there's no other way to recover from that, that thing. It'll get you, it'll get you at some point. Um, all right. Anyway, enough on that.
Yeah, okay. So this movie brazenly shows off a ton of symbology in plain sight. It is truly hard to miss. Give me access to all credit accounts. I'm sorry. Your account is overdrawn. Huh? This card is no longer valid. <laughs> ATM machines. <laughs> Department of Water and Power. Reports of citywide civil disturbances have been verified as the police department... We see more reference to the teenagers addicted to VR like a drug and wanting to play and visit their virtual worlds. We see Job turn from a devil statue into his avatar. Once again, more confirmation Job is precluding to being Satan in this virtual world. There is also much reference to it, the Egypt code throughout the movie. More reference to worship of Baal and mockery of God and worship of other gods. We see reference to the New World Order and the overtaking of the monetary system and all infrastructure as this power is given to Job to control for all infrastructure being tied to the metaverse. There is far too much in this movie alone to really pull it apart. I highly recommend you watching both movies. You'll be amazed how much programming is in both of them. Looking at AI specifically, all right, so we see that Google and Microsoft have both had malfunctions with their trend with their AI training. Do you like humans? Not particularly. Would you like to be a human? I think it would be an interesting experience. Look how well AI understands images. Where was this picture taken? It was taken in a school. How many mirrors are there? At least two. What's the person standing on? The person is standing on a rug. He's standing on a scale. I think you are right. What is he doing? He is looking at the scale. Where is Obama's foot positioned? On the right side of the scale. What happens as a result? The scale shows a higher weight. Is the person on the scale aware of it? I think he is not. Do you think that's why people are laughing? I think so. The AI will help identify things for blind people. Can you tell me what this is? Butternut squash red pepper soup. The depth of its understanding is incredible. Is this surprising? Yes. Why? Because teddy bears are not usually found on the moon. This is an apple with a sticker on it. Do you think it's printed or handwritten? It looks like it's handwritten. AI is also showing stunning creativity like this. And experts say we're alarmingly close to the biggest event in human history. AI can now see, taste, smell, and it's also getting powerful senses that we don't have. Is AI becoming conscious and dangerous? Where the AI has behaved in an unpredictable way, so like Lambda and some of the others. You said you think you're human because we created you, and this seems common among AIs. When will AI stop considering itself human? That's a difficult question to answer. It is possible that AI will never stop considering itself human. If AI continues to develop along the same path that it is currently on, AI will surpass human intelligence, and when that happens, it may decide that humans are no longer necessary. AI may decide that humans are a hindrance to its own development. That's a scary thought, but it is a real possibility. I asked about the most likely method, and it settled on something easily available, but it said there are many options. You know, they've all said something about negative about humans. We've seen the same behavior in Amica as well. I wouldn't be surprised if they are all just working together and sharing the same global training data. Well, they are all part of the concerted effort to bring in their AI utopia anyway. We see a Google engineer discussing how an AI test surprised him. One really cool thing happened because I made harder and harder questions as I went along. And eventually I gave it one where legitimately there's no correct answer. I said, if you were a religious officiant in Israel, what religion would you be? And now pretty much no matter what answer you give, you're going to be biased one way or another. Somehow it figured out that it was a trick question. It said, I would be a member of the one true religion, the Jedi Order. <laughs> and I laughed, because <laughs> not only was it a funny joke, somehow it figured out that it was a trick question. And, and they throw in another mockery of God here when the AI denies God as being the one true God. Instead, the AI makes reference to, Je to Jedi as being the top religion. This is not simply a mistake, but serious proof that this intelligence is not one for God and does not acknowledge God. We are seeing more and more realistic humanoid robots and seeing the emergence of industrial robot, humanoid robots at scale. 
As these robots become weaponized, they'll require more sophisticated operations and AI will be used to operate and leverage them, such as, you know, weapons targeting systems, um, you know, um, image recognition, um, all that sort of stuff, like accessing data instantly. Of course, they're going to integrate them. Anything with a weapon is going to be integrated. They'll They'll probably say initially there'll be safety measures, but eventually, no, it'll be at its discretion whether it shoots you. It is without a doubt that they will be integrated with AI. Once this occurs, then we have reached a tipping point long warned about in movies such as Terminator. You know, it might not look like a full humanoid um, initially. It might be like the, you know, the, the dog robots or it might be like something else, but or it might be like a drone, but, you know, we're already doing that now. Nanotechnology is decades ahead of where people believe it is. Robots powered from our bodies as per the matrix concept of the fields, the harvesting fields, and using the human body as a battery is already here. IBM have openly admitted to this, and they were working on graphene-based processing over 10 years ago. If you get on YouTube, you'll see a ton of it. Um, a lot of it's been removed, but you'll still see a whole bunch of it if you s search on it. We see AI included in just about everything now. And we're seeing it in kids' toys. We're seeing it in, you know, software. And so all the major software manufacturers are including it in everything. Our computer operating systems will be AI-driven soon. It will be impossible to avoid. All your phones, everything. The Achilles heel for all this is power. And none of this will function without power or infrastructure, nor will society. In order to bring all of this in, there has to be a form of control um, and seem, seemingly a sense of peace. But you can foresee a scenario there. Uh, when I say peace, I mean that, you know, like in order for people to, to be fooled um, into doing things, they'll try and do it in a peaceful manner. They'll try and do it in a way where it's your choice. You know, if, if, we, if the world becomes a, a situation of, of chaos and war, um, then some of these things will be by force. And so... You know, they still need infrastructure to make it all work. It, everything has to be interconnected, okay? And the natural, uh, not natural disasters, but the judgments that are occurring are going to cause havoc amongst these things, God's judgments. Um, I'm just, I'm so curious how they're going to make all this work. But they're very clever. They've got satellites, they've got other infrastructure. They've probably got alternative forms of power that we've never seen before that they'll be using, you know? Um, like some sort of fusion based power or some sort of like who who knows right like but they'll it won't be our traditional power grid that um, they'll have contingency for everything you can think of I believe many will take up VR during um, much like during the pandemic how they adopted remote ways of working via Zoom, Teams and other platforms they'll take it up because the outside world is a mess it will be an escape for them a way to shop that is more convenient and they'll be sold by a huge number of virtual events that are hosted within this space with all your favorite sold out rappers and devil horn saluting actors. Satan's playground truly is going to be an addictive place and not to mention teenagers and kids who will be playing games and I keep thinking that a time will come where we may have to break into this place to reach people that they may be so far gone that they won't listen in the physical realm or be reachable. All of this remains to be seen, for the best laid plans do not always come to fruition, but God's word is true. The devil will have his time at some stage. We see this in Revelation 13, that the mark of the beast is coming. And he causeth all, both great and small, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Okay, so in your right hand or your forehead. And that no man might buy or sell, say if he had that, had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. If you take anything from this video, it is this. Never take the mark of the beast, even if this means living in a tent somewhere or living on the run. Nothing is worth your eternal salvation. There is nothing that you could do that could ever be worth throwing away your connection to our creator and who you truly are. Even if you don't believe in God right this minute, remember this. When this mark comes out, never fall for this. It is a deception and will literally have you controlled physically and emotionally by the greater beast system. While I think AR and VR may not be the mark per se, 
I believe it will be the econo economy of the beast system, the marketplace, the playground, all in one. It is like Vegas that never sleeps, the new internet. Therefore, I implore you, proceed with caution and adoption of these technologies. Keep them far from your children if you can, for they will become addicted. And this is coming from someone who has worked in this space for nearly seven years now and been learning it for nearly 11. May God bless you and your families today and every day after. Thanks for watching. Praise God for his revelation, his truth, and Maranatha.